as good a game as you guys just saw there based on what we had last night in the semifinals between Gonzaga and San Diego. And the Maniacs here at McCarthy are hungry for another WCC championship. Gonzaga putting its 39-game home winning streak on the line tonight against Loyola Marymount in the tournament final. Gonzaga has won this championship six of the last seven years, making its ninth straight appearance tonight against LMU. Championship week presented by 7-Up. Loyola Marymount knocked off St. Mary's in the semis last night, and Gonzago took overtime to beat San Diego 96-92. Dave Fash alongside Coach Rick Majerus, and Adam Morrison had arguably the best half of any individual in college basketball this year, Coach, when he put up 37 at Loyola Marymount in a Gonzaga win. He's a triple-A player anywhere, anyhow, anytime. He gets to the paint easily, and he's got the long ball. What he does best of all, though, is move without the ball and get himself some shots. He's just simply superb. Bill Bradley-esque as an old throwback and moving without the ball. Our TD Waterhouse Star Watch doesn't feature Morrison, but rather J.P. Batista and Loyola Marymount's Matthew Knight. Matthew Knight has got his imprint all over the stats of this league. He's a shot blocker, he's a rebounder, and he's a terrific scorer in the low post. J.P. Baptista, a terrific pin and seal guy, a risk adverse passer. He runs the floor, he's a willing runner, and he's an outstanding position rebounder. No one in college ball utilizes his body better. Loyola Marymount had three first team all WCC members, Knight, Worthy, Wardrop, Ayer, and Ziri join him in the starting lineup. The usual five for the Zags, Morrison, Mallon, Batista, Altador, Cespedes, and Rivio. And Loyola Marymount wins the opening tap. This is a home game for the Zags. As we mentioned, they've won 39 in a row at home, and they've never lost in this arena, which has been open for two years. They've won 17 straight overall, 26 in a row against WCC teams. Loyola Marymount with a turnover on its opening possession. Let's make sure we set the scene here. This isn't a tournament game. This is a road game for Loyola, as evidenced by that nervousness early. That the Zags are playing home, and that's a big advantage. Loyola Marymount, the two seed in the WCC, an eight and six record in conference, but only 12 and 17 overall. They started eight and two in the league, but then lost their final four regular season game. Here is Morrison, and he can't hit his first shot. Mallon's foul won't go, and Matthew Knight, who averages 10 rebounds per game, first team All WCC, pulls it down for LMU. Worthy on the other end, and then Altador Cespedes. Stepped on the end line, and it will go to Loyola Marymount. Gonzaga, 39 straight home wins going back to a loss in 2003 to Portland. Mark Few, terrific record. He has been the coach of the year in this conference six consecutive years and could be a candidate for national coach of the year. Yes, he will, but he, uh, there's gonna, they're going to give that to somebody like a Bruce Pearl or one of the young guys on the way up as well they should when he got it that, that young on the way up. Three opportunities for LMU, and finally a foul is called. That's the first foul in the game. It's going to go against Sean Mallon. And that's what they've got to do. They've got to go inside. The Zag zone then then out of bounds, and what I like best on that zone, they went inside first of all. Gonzaga's won six in a row against Loyola Marymount, 16 of the last 17. Swept him this year, trailed at halftime in the game at LMU. And then, as we mentioned in the open, Adam Morrison lit up the lines. Hit eight threes in the second half, scored 37 points. Rodney Tension, the LMU head coach, told me before the game, they've got to get a hand in his face before he even catches the ball. I like their high-low versus his own and against man-to-man. -man. They've got to utilize that as much. Knight can finish down there against any kind of contract, contact, and Air is a good high-low pass. Knight is now four points shy of 1,000 for his career after that basket. He's wide wheel at 21 last night. An air ball there, and John Ziri to rebound. They have so much respect for Batista, they're doubling him at every catch. And they're coming big, big. Their other big has got to cut to the back of the rim, and then they got to fill the two top spots at the top of the key. Ziri off the dribble. Reported by J.P. Batista. Averages nine and a half rebounds per game. Four straight double-doubles for Batista, even though he missed about nine or ten minutes with that mild knee sprain last night. They got water up on Morrison, and he'll just shoot over him. Well, they did not do it. Rodney Tension said they had to do They didn't get to him before he caught the ball, and he scores the Zags' first points of the game. Wadrup 
got, he got separation on him. He changes pace so well and utilizes his screener. This could be Adam Morrison's final home game. He's a junior, but many think that he will forego his senior year and go to the NBA. Well, he likes college, but I'll tell you this, he'll like the first and 15th of every month more <laughs> if he goes to the next league. Yeah, that's payday. Knight misses the second opportunity. Here comes Morrison. I like doubling them off that screen like they just did. Rivio can't hit the three. Morrison with the offensive rebound. And then Ayer blocked the shot. Last touch by LMU. And J.P. Batista is going to go to the bench. Josh Heitfeld comes into the game. Take a look at Morrison moving out the ball here. Watch Ravio's pass. He gets separation. They get up to him late. They got a hand up in his face, Dave. You don't want a hand in his face. You want a hand up perpendicular to the ceiling to change the release of the shot. Altidore Cespedes on the drive. Can't hit the floater. Air with a rebound. We Pete, mentioned. P Mac to me, and you keep pronouncing these names that well, you're going to be on the watch list by the federal government. You're superb at that stuff. Well, I got another one for you. Heitfeld, he just came into the game replacing Batista, who went to the bench last night. A lot of times, Batista would go into the tunnel and ride the bike in between sections on the floor. It comes Rivey over the Zach. Heitfeld can shoot it from out there. Elects not to pull the trigger. He gives him the only athletic guy in the baseline other than Morrison. See, Morrison just gets the middle game and rides up and shoots over him. Morrison with all five of the Zach's points. Fans might want to stay in the night because this boy could go for 40 tonight, Morrison. They've got, I'll tell you the X factor, it could be Hayward. I'd pull Hayward off that bench and put him on him and say sick him. Hayward about six feet six, had 10 points last night against St. Mary's. On the end of the bench right now, shot clock at 10. He was a difference maker in last night's game. And his rebounding, his defense, his energy. Morrison with a steal. And here comes Rivio. Morrison guarded by Wardrop. She now he goes to the post. He's so smart. Now watch this. He's going to back him down. Good job by oh. Draws the foul on air. That's the first foul on LMU. That's the call you get when you're the MVP in the country and the leading scorer right there. That referee, watch Morrison sweep and drive this goal for the middle game as we talked about earlier. Adam Morrison, two out of four from the field. The rest of the Zags, 0 for 4. They lead by three. J.P. Batista had a mild knee sprain and thigh contusion yesterday and that went over San Diego riding the bike. He did that a lot in the second half yesterday. No points yet for Batista. Hasn't taken a shot. And Rodney Tension, the Loyola Marymount head coach, thinks they really got to stop him in transition. Well, what he does is look at it right here, how he drives that high post. He can hit that little jumper from there. There's where you see him get hurt. He catches one on the thigh, but watch this here. He's just so strong now. He does a great job in that clip of not raising his elbow. He bumps you off of his lower body. Morrison to the foul line. You know, Coach, there's been a lot of talk about Gonzaga having perhaps an unfair advantage in terms of free throws. Jesse Evans, the San Francisco coach, thought that maybe the officials were intimidated. Rodney Tension didn't really want to talk about it when I asked him about it before the game. And interestingly enough, Loyola Marymount actually has shot more free throws than Gonzaga in both their meetings. Last night, Gonzaga shot 26 more than their opponent, San Diego. Referees will vehemently refute this, but I think subliminally, in the recesses of their mind, there's star treatment whether it be college or pro. Nice job by Loyola pounding the offensive glass. Yeah, finally, Chris Ayer scores. They were about one for six in the paint before that shot fell. Height fell. Back rim the three. Long board to Worthy. Three on two. Ziri. Ayer with the tip. Four points for Chris Ayer. What a beautiful break. A textbook break, and the big kept running. He was rewarded at the end for his effort. Altidore Cespedes. Oh, he didn't leave his feet. Well, Altidore Cespedes tripped there. I don't know if that was a shot or a pass or if he just lost the ball. 
Morrison for three. He's down nine for Gonzaga. And he just pulled a Reggie Miller. He just pushed off upper body and got the separation on Wardrop that way. This looks eerily similar to the second half at Loyola Marymount when he had 37. He's got all nine, and in that game, Coach, he had 44 against Loyola Marymount. No one else scored in double figures for Gonzaga. They don't have anyone that can play because of such a decided height disadvantage. Brandon Worthy cans a three. First team all WCC. He ties it at nine. Morrison line, Lions nine. Height fell. And Knight with the board. That's the guy you want to keep shooting right there. You don't want Morris to get the catches. They don't pick up Worthy. Got his own miss. He is a competitor, that kid. Nice he reverse layup. One shot so well for a guard. Five points now for Worthy. LMU by two. Go to Morrison. Give him all he can eat. Wardrup gives up about five inches. And he's going to get called for a foul. That's his first second on Loyola Marymount. He has so many great Reggie Miller instincts. He draws attention to the foul, to the hold. He'll lock arms and get a call. Watch right here. Well, we didn't see the push off right there, but that separation that he got on Wardrop right there was created by a push off. Wardrop is a warrior, and he's trying to stay with him step for step. They're going to put Ziri on Morrison now. Morrison from about 28 feet. Pendergraf kept it alive to Knight. Then he has it taken away, and Knight's going to get called for the foul. That's the second on Gonzaga, and the first on Earl Knight. Now you're talking about the defense on Adam Morrison, and nobody's played Morrison better this year than Corey Belser of San Diego. Did a good job in Morrison last night, held in only five made shots and 16 attempts. Morrison still managed 24 points, though. San Diego played a great game last night. When they look at that film and review it retrospectively, there's nothing more they could have done. Gonzaga played better. They have better players, better depth, better personnel, and, and they're at home. But, I mean, San Diego should go home proud and a candidate for the NIT. Loyola Marymount with eight points in the paint, seven offensive rebounds already in the game. And all uh, eight of those points in the paint, second chance points as well. There's John Montgomery to Knight, and he hits the long jump shot. That's the first time I saw where Baptista, he doesn't have lift to begin with, but he really labored to get out there on that hand up. Earl Knight missed the three. Nobody has scored for Gonzaga other than Adam Morrison. He's got all nine in the Zags, trail by four. Aren't the only threes Earl Knight hit against San Diego the whole year? Yep. Well, two out of the three were against San Diego, including the one last night. Montgomery couldn't handle it. It'll go to the Zags. Marymount shooting 35% from the floor, but leading by four. The best thing they're doing is they're getting back in transition and not giving up fast break baskets. Gonzaga's an excellent team on a make or miss of pushing the ball in the open floor. Seven straight points for LMU. Well, Marymount going to his own here. Do you like this call by Rodney Tension? I do, because of foul trouble. They better find Morrison. Montgomery's too deep. That's a three. They didn't find him there. And he's got all 12 of his axe points. I'd go box and one. I'd take my wrist with Radio. You cannot allow him an open look. He's a great open shooter with unbelievable range. There's your guy Haywood. Missed the shot. Knight the rebound. Morrison in the second half at Loyola Marymount at 37. He's got 12 in the first half tonight. The only zag on the board. He's not really a selfish player either. He does for, for the leading scorer in the country. He does a good job of letting the game come to him. Batista fouled by Worthy, his first, third on the Lions. And Batista will go to the free throw line for a pair. What Morrison does is he hunts the shot, but he doesn't force the shot. One point, Loyola Marymount lead. We've got a timeout on the floor with 11.26 to go in the first half. Time now for a Sports Center 30 at 30 update. Loyola Marymount leads Gonzaga by one in the West Coast Conference title game. It's time now for ESPNU's pride of the program. Tonight in the spotlight, Syracuse. Champion. 
champions of college basketball. More of ESPN News. Proud of the program features available on mobile ESPN. And Adam Morrison with 12 points so far in the game. All 12 of the Zach's points. He's on pace for 60 right now, Coach. Well, but more importantly, that's your alma mater. And I told Daryl Gross, the great young AD there, that your check was in the mail. <laughs> I, I think you're fun, you know, weight room or something, aren't you? <laughs> Jerry McNamara goes from winning a national championship, Sweet 16 next year. First round loss his third year, and then maybe not even making the NCAA tournament. And the great Big East Championship starts this week on ESPN and ESPN2. Some terrific matchups. That kid's all heart, and you're right about these matchups coming up this weekend. You want to have all the ESPN channels. Travel on Haywood. Got a little anxious. That was the difference maker in last night's game. And this is the one guy that might be able to stick it to Morrison. He's not on him. Rodney Tension in his first year played in this league at San Francisco. Spent the last eight seasons as an assistant at the University of Arizona. Watch Morrison move without the ball here. Rivio taking it all the way and getting it to go. What a beautiful runner. That's four straight by someone different than Adam Morrison. Two for Batista, two for Rivio. There you go, right inside the night. Give it to him. Montgomery off target with a three, and Batista, the lone body under the basket for the rebound. Quick shot, too early in the clock. Morrison got Siri in the air. That's a foul. Was it a two or a three? It's a three. So Morrison will shoot three free throws. ESPN's coverage of the Big East Championship we were just talking about kicks off Wednesday from Madison Square Garden. Could be a big game for both Syracuse and Cincinnati. Notre Dame and Georgetown. Are the Hoyas in trouble at all, Coach? Uh, are they a bubble team or are they definitely in? No, I think they're in, but I'll tell you what. If for Syracuse to be in, I believe they've got to beat Cincinnati. Cincinnati may lose, but I think that they'll be in. But if you really want to know, just go to the WW, the worldwide leader, and look at Lenardi. That guy's got it right all the time. Well, Lenardi's a bracketology and a Gonzaga, a two seed in the Oakland region. They're going to look to see whether it was a two or three by Morrison. Mark Few says if Gonzaga wins this championship, they should be a two seed. What's Morrison right there? Change pace, change speeds. Hard to call. It looked like his left foot might have been on. I don't, if, if the question is, does his left foot come down? It's a three. Yeah, when he shot the basketball, he was behind the line. Yeah, and the answer was a dent. But that play the there gives Shooting an example three. of how he changes speed, changes direction, pushes off, so he gets the NBA separation to get his shot up. That was on Zeri's first, fourth on the Lions. But a free throw discrepancy so far, 5 nothing in favor of Gonzaga. He reminds me so much of Brian Winters. The great guard for the Bucks of the Laker trade with Kareem Abdul Jabbar, where he has that high release. His shot is so difficult to block, and this is why he's got such a great middle game. A lot of guys have high releases on their middle game, but not on their foul shot game. He shoots the same shot for the three ball, the middle game, and the foul, foul line right here. That's the key, isn't it, Coach? Yes, shoot. it is. There's no variance in stroke. That's a great observation on your part. And in, a, and in that hearing all three of those, he missed two or three. <laughs> <laughs> Still an eight nothing run by Gonzaga. Montgomery gets it into the paint. Nice move by Air. He's having a heck of a first half. Six points, five rebounds. Good pass by Montgomery. Midway through the first half in the West Coast Conference Championship game. Gonzaga trying to win it for the seventh time in eight years. Earl Knight lost it, and it's going to go to LMU. Watch Air stay big. Nice feed by Montgomery there. Look at Air. Beautiful. Plays small to big. Gets his head around on the hook. Getting your head around is critical. Lions have not been to the NCAA tournament since 1990. Haven't won the West Coast Conference Championship since 89. As Air can't hit it from the baseline. The reason they won it 
uh, that went to the tournament in 1990 as an automatic bid without winning the championship is because the WCC tournament was suspended due to the death of Hank Gathers in the middle of that tournament. Meanwhile, Loyola just changes its zone to a 1-3-1. That was a nice move by Coach Tension. Keep them guessing, and the, and the really is on this is they feel like they got the Morrison right there. Morrison missed, but Mallon with a rebound. Another block by Air Montgomery, able to save it to Wardrop. Air does a great job of staying grounded. He just stays seven foot. Worthy hits the three. LMU by one. In transition, I'm going to tell you something. What Lyle was doing too. They're keeping fresh blood on Morrison. They've rotated three or four different players to him, so they keep fresh blood on him. And the guy covering him has always got some energy. Oh, look at this save by Montgomery. Look at Wardrop right here. Look at him search the floor. They run. Beautiful break. John Zeri. And Worthy with eight points, averaging 21 points per game in his last 10. Gonzaga, one of the best shooting teams in college basketball, only 26% from the field right now. And Morrison has four of the five made shots for the Zags in the first half. And as I said, this 1-3-1 deployment as opposed to the 2-3 lets him get out to Morrison a little better on those foul line extended deep wings that Morrison loves so much. Mallon inside the arc. First points for Mallon. That kid's very understated. He's an excellent shooter, stretches a D. Very reliable shooter, consistent. Our fifth lead change already in this game. Worthy on Pargo. Ziri from outside. And he hits the three. And draws water as well. My God, that release. That's a cloud piercer. Only a 33% three-point shooter on the year. Altidor Cespedes beautifully done. Hitting Heitfeld underneath for the hoop to tie it at 21. That team hack look there was just sensational. That kid's going to be a great point guard to move Rabio over to two, where he's much more comfortable as a directed shooter. Altidor Cespedes has been on fire from three-point land, hitting nine of his last ten from three. Air has the hot hand for LMU, but not that time. Heitfeld the board. And to the fans watching, he's team hack to me because I can't pronounce that. Meanwhile, Batista is still on the bike. The only French I want to know is Fry. Altidore Cespedes missing that three. 21 21, 7 28 to go in the first half. Batista has uh, played sparingly because of a mild knee sprain suffered last night. He's been riding the bike in between sections on the floor. Adam Morrison has 13 points to lead the way for Gonzaga. As Ziri brings rain again. My God. What a nice cross court skip pass. He's only shooting 33% from out there this year. Hasn't taken a lot of threes. Very two. Back to back. Lob the height belt broken up. By Haywood, ever the deflector, ever the defensive disruptor. Height felt reverses, can't hit it. Worthy with the rebound. Three on two break. See if they come away with anything. Worthy gonna pull up. And he was fouled by Altador Cespedes. That's his first. And the third on Gonzaga. Loyola Marymount getting three-point baskets from John Ziri back to back. It's and Gonzaga's 39-game home winning streak. Could it be in jeopardy tonight in the WCC title game? Tonight's telecast available on ESPN HD, presented by Dish Network. The Hartford Civic Center will be rocking tomorrow night for the Women's Big East Championship on ESPN2. West Virginia upset Rutgers tonight. We'll take on either DePaul or Connecticut as championship week presented by 7-Up continues from Hartford tomorrow night. We're in Spokane tonight for the final of the men's WCC championship. Gonzaga has won it six out of the last seven years for the first time ever in its current format. It's on the home floor of the Zags. Loyola Marymount hasn't won this title since 1989, hasn't been to the NCAA tournament since 1990. Speaking of high definition, good thing we had it because high is where those Zuri Three balls are coming down from. I've never seen an art quite that high. Be successful. He knocked down two of them. Now Worthy and extend the lead to five. Can't Batista with a rebound. He can hit those two threes, but he's a 37% free throw shooter. Ah, good change out of the timeout. They go man to man. 
keep them off balance a little bit. And the reason they're doing this is because why? Morrison's out. First time Morrison's been on the bench. Batista back into the game after spending about five minutes riding the bike. That was the last touch by Worthy, so it stays Zag's ball with 12 to shoot. So what's the play here for Gonzaga without Morrison in the game? Baptista, Baptista, and more Baptista. Let's get him right on that block, let that big body pin and seal. And hope they follow him because he's an 83% foul shooter. Mallon. And Altador Cespedes knocked it over to Worthy. Worthy gets into the lane. Offensive foul. Second on Brandon Worthy. Fifth on the Lions. Mallon's one of my teamwork Tuesday players. He steps in and takes charges. He screens. He does all the little things. The compilation of all the little things to help you win. Watch him be alert here in transition. That wasn't his man at all. He just steps in and takes a charge. He's got a great team attitude. He'll never appear on third on Thursday, but if you look for teamwork, he's a man. He made some big plays defensively last night in that overtime win against San Diego. And a nice back cut there. Gets it blocked by Knight, but a foul inside. And PMAC on that pass, does he see the floor or what? That's 16 fouls on Loyola Marymount in the first on Matthew Knight. This is a nice backcourt, and it'll be terrific next year. PMAC and Rabio. Altador Cespedes has really picked up his game as a scorer. Allen uh, can't connect on the free throw. If you're surprised to see Gonzaga down in the first half, don't be. They've been a second-half team all year. They shot 63% from the field in the second half last night. Ended up beating San Diego in overtime as Allen goes over two. And against Loyola Marymount, in case you don't recall, they were down at halftime by four at LMU. And then Adam Morrison put up 37 in the second half as the Zags beat the Lions. Knight forcing it up, won't go. And Batista clearing. Good block out by the two small guards on air there. Batista's hit three threes on the year. They leave Gerganis alone in the short corner, and he lost it to Ziri. Few does a real good job of getting all these guys in and getting Morrison rest in the first half. So at crunch time, Morrison is in. Wide open three for Wardrop, and he couldn't knock it down. Morrison will come into the next dead ball. Radio's three, and out. And last touched by Gonzaga. So Morrison back in. He has 13 of the 21 Gonzaga points. Endergraft also in. Mallon and Altado Cespedes go to the bench. Bravio is such a con confident shooter. You know, he, I call him a directed shooter. When he knows the shot's coming for him, and he'll be that more as a two guard, he shoots so much better. He's got a low release, sometimes a little bit too quick a release. He's got double figure scoring in three of the last four after six in a row, under 10 points. Look at how Batista just sits in there and gives help tonight. Here's Montgomery. Trying to fight out of the double team does. Montgomery on the drive. The floater. And LMU has its largest lead of the night. Excellent ball movement right there. John Montgomery probably learned that shot from his dad, Mike Montgomery. Former Stanford head coach, current Golden State head coach. Beautiful. Job by Ziri to save it to Wardrop. Here come the Lions. Ziri and Worthy are nothing if not great competitors. And Wardrop under the backboard, able to draw a foul. That's going to go in Pendergraft, his first and the fourth on Gonzaga. Wardrop has the best shot fake on the floor. He's got a terrific ball fake, gets you up in the air. Does a good job of driving the closeout too. As you build out to him, he lets you get close and then he takes you. Wardrop, an excellent free throw shooter at 77%, but missed the first one. Earl Knight back into the game. Best athlete on the floor. You saw his decathlon abilities last night. Wardrop missed them both. Oil of Marymount's one out of four from the line. They were seven of 21 from the line last night, but managed to beat St. Mary's. You can't do that tonight, though, and have a chance of beating the Zag. You've got to make the free throws because you're not going to get there as often as the Zags are. And they rack up points at the line. Gonzaga does. They're number two in the country in free throw shooting. 
Morrison foul will go to the line, looking for points 14 and 15. Six point Loyola Marymount lead, the largest of the night for the Lions. Reese Davis and Digger Phelps coming up on the 7-Up Halftime Report. We'll tell you how long Arizona is going to be playing shorthanded and unveil who the big man on campus is. The big men in the West Coast Conference having a little trouble right now, Digger. Well, the Zags are behind against Loyola when we played about two weeks ago at halftime. Looks like they're heading that way this half. I just think their defense breaks down, Reese, and they don't stop good penetration where they help to the ball. All right, we'll also have the latest on the passing of Kirby Puckett. That's coming up, 7-Up Halftime Report, guys. All right, guys, I want to know if Digger has a marker that matches that color right there. Digger's got all the colors. We need to get you one that matches your turtlenecks. <laughs> I've only got a couple colors of turtlenecks. Yeah, Black Sharpie would do it. I, my, my colors of my turtlenecks are brown, charcoal, or black. Horrible news on Kirby Puckett, huh, dying at age 44. How sad and tragic. You guys will have more on that coming up at halftime. Morrison looking for his 15th point. 15 of the 23 in this game for Morrison. The Zags are 6 of 11 at the free throw line so far in the game. They show a 2-3 zone right now with a trap. They leave Montgomery. They were going to trap wherever the second pass went. Both Knight and Worthy are out of the game right now. The two leading scorers for Loyal Marymount. So let's see how the Lions do here with those two guys on the bench. Shot clock at six, and that pass picked off by Kindergrass. Worthy does have two fouls. That's probably a reason why he's on the bench. Well, that is the reason. They lose him, they're in big trouble because he gives them swagger, confidence, and form. Morrison got a block, but got it back, got it stripped. And diving on the floor is Montgomery and able to call timeout. And they hadn't used one yet this half. He had the presence of mind to make that great call. Morrison not happy with the call. Not getting the breaks tonight. And Gonzaga is down four. Well, much like the game in which Gonzaga won at Loyola Marymount, it's been all Adam Morrison for the Zags, but they trail by four. Here's why I call him a 3A player. Anywhere, anytime, anyhow. Separation to long ball three. Step up three versus the zone. Look at him sweep and drive to his middle game. How about that teardrop right there? Le left side of the floor, right side of the floor. He has change of pace, change of direction. He has the pro push off to get separation. He's got 15 points tonight. Had a career high 44 in the last meeting with LMU. Hit eight threes in that game. Has three tonight. But his team trails by four and gets a gift there as Montgomery turns it over to Morrison. Going to take it all the way. And offensive foul called on Morrison. What a beautiful defensive play. Well, Dude, you don't get back on D. You're going to get totally zagged. These guys have got back on D. Great job. That's the first on Morrison, fifth on Gonzaga, and there's been so much talk about Gonzaga getting the calls this week. Do you think it's had adverse effects on Gonzaga in terms of now not getting the calls? No, I don't think so. I think right now the game's being officiated very, very well. The referee is getting a few calls of his own with some hand gestures and arm sign language from behind the bench. There have been a lot of quotes that have been disparaging towards Gonzaga as a team and also towards Adam Morrison. This is what Corey Belser had to say in the Seattle Times after the game last night. Said that uh, Adam was uh, talking smack with him. And this is pretty innocuous compared to his next quote that uh, Belser made. He says, the last time we lost to them, he told me that if I got hit by a train and died, he wouldn't care. And... He says that his tactics are, quote, a little unclassy. He's not what college basketball should be, end quote. And the response by Adam Morrison, he says, quote, it's over and done with. Like I always say to him, scoreboard, I've never lost to him, and losers never get a chance to talk trash, end quote. Morrison also said that he did not say that to Belser with reference to the train wreck. He did not make that comment. He was quoted as saying that in the Seattle Times as well. Well... He better take a theology class, divinize his passivities, as my team priest used to say. Well, Marymount by 
four. Nice pass and a jam by Haywood and a foul. Flushes it down. I told you he could be the X Factor now. He's trying to talk some smack. Haywood went right at height though, and he gave him a one four. It's amazing how the NBA has affected all these young guys. The greatest guy in the world, Stockton, is sitting in these stands. I've never said anything to anybody. And he's a guy who did let his game do his talking for him. Look at Haywood. First foul on Heitfeld. Sixth foul on the Bulldogs. Is that one of the reasons why, Coach, you left coaching for now in terms no, of... No, no, that had nothing to do with it. The players? No, no. Does that bother you? Is that something you think I don't, belongs I, in the game? I never wanted my guys. No, I believe that doesn't belong in the game. Now we got Knight and Haywood after each other. You know what McGuire used to do when they talk smack and practice? He let them fight. <laughs> Nobody wanted to fight. <laughs> well, they usually will let that go in the NBA. Sometimes let them fight during practice, but not that often in college. It seems these days, Coach, like everybody, whether you're the leading scorer in the nation, Adam Morrison, or the 12th guy on the bench, if you make a play, you're going you're gonna to talk about it. Well, it reverts to the Simpsons, and it reverts to the culture, societal issues. Latchkey kids. I mean, there's a whole, you know, social encompassment of why, what, what this is all about right here. Well, then they get Montgomery for a foul, and that, I guess, is the official's way of taking control. They call that foul right on the inbounds pass when they weren't calling that earlier in the game. That's the first on Montgomery, the eighth on Loyola Marymount. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen now. This is going to disrupt the beautiful game being played. The ebb and flow of it because now all of a sudden these refs are going to get involved in the melodrama of not wanting this to get out of control. Live view, a 92% free throw shooter hits the front end of the one and one. But as you said before, these officials have done a great job in this game up until this point and had to take control there. I mean, this has been a physical tournament. And all of the games played in this building against Gonzaga have been physical. Morrison commented to me in between games last night that he feels like he gets just beaten up every single game in this conference. And his defender feels like he gets pushed off every time. So it's who's off his score. That's, that's the yin and yang of the game and of life. Air can't hit the one-hander. Pender graph for the rebound. Five-point Loyola Marymount lead. Morrison with 15 of the 25 Zag points. Drives the lane and can't get it, but he'll go to the line for two. See, there's no need for Air to jump on that. He's seven foot. All he wants to do is stay big and stay grounded. That's two on air. Watch Morrison here. He's going to spin. Air comes over to help. Why jump up? Why? I mean, make him hit a tough shot. You know, why bail him out right there? He did a good job in making him finish at the rim. Stay grounded. That means he's not a jump in the air shot blocker anyway. How about Morrison? Four out of eight at the free throw line in this game. He shoots close to 80% as Matthew Knight returns. And Worthy's going to come in as well. 26 more attempts for Gonzaga than San Diego in its semifinal game. And Loyola Marymount in its game against St. Mary's missed 14 out of 21 from the line. Morrison hits the second one. I saw Jerry West against the Milwaukee Bucks in an NBA playoff game of consequence. Championship Series go 1 for 13 and took the 14 shot to win the game like they hit the other 12. Mm -hmm. Morrison's that kind of player. He shot almost twice as many free throws as Lionel Marymount has in this game. This crowd that have been a little bit wine and cheesy over him, like a Seattle crowd, has not gotten into this. Here's Worthy. And the long jumper drops for Dustin Brown. And it's a six-point Loyola Marymount lead again. Well, I was doing a terrific job of getting back in transition, particularly after a score. That was something that the Tory Doors struggled with last night for San Diego. Carreros. Here's Morrison for three. And Gonzaga still without a field goal in the last seven minutes. And they give it away there. He always misses off the back of the room. What a break. And Worthy gets the easy basket. Eight-point lead, largest of the night. Timeout Mark View. The Zags did not get back on defense. A couple of the Zags just stopped, and Loyola Marymount had an easy two on the other end. They had good court balance. That was a good shot. That's Morrison's shot. Who else would you want to take that shot? He's wide open. Now, look at right here. Morrison doesn't run back. Look at Pendergraf pass them all by, hustling back. Morrison's got to learn to get back himself right there. 
don't care who you are. That's one thing I admire about Reddick. Reddick shoots out of a corner or misses or things go wrong. He gets back on D, talks, points, touches, pushes his teammates out, and communicates. Morrison leading the nation in scoring, and he and J.J. Reddick, both named the USA men's basketball senior national team, will start it in the FIBA World Championships this summer, and then the Olympics in 2008 in Beijing. That was a smart move by Jim Tooley, who's the head of USA Basketball. That's just a terrifically run organization, and every kid should hope that he gets a chance to be involved in, because with the three-year commitment coming up for these pros, here we look at Morrison and Reddick, and those comparisons right there, I think level of competition, Reddick's defense, and Reddick playing alongside two freshmen, you know, uh, and gives him, in, in the toughest, second toughest, or third toughest league in the country, gives him a decided edge over Morrison. And I like Morrison. Gonzaga has 26 points in this game. Belzer might not, but I like Morrison. Drivio off the screen. There's about a nine second difference between the game and shot clocks. And Morrison had it taken away. And another breakaway for LMU. Montgomery to Haywood, swatted away by Knight. Montgomery gets it back. And then Mellon clears. Ten seconds to go. Morrison calling for it. Rivio going to put it up. Knight tips it up. Oh, but to Rivio, no good. Wardrop. 1.3, they could get it. Too long. But an eight-point lead for Loyola Marymount. No field goals in the final eight minutes for Gonzaga. Adam Morrison had 16. Does he have another 37-point half in him? It might take that to beat Loyola Marymount in the WCC championship game tonight. The road team, for all intents and purposes, leading by eight as we go back to the studio in Reese Davis. <laughs> Gonzaga's never lost at the McCarthy Athletic Center, has won 39 in a row at home, and if this keeps up, someone's bubble will be bursting in college basketball. Loyola Marymount has a losing overall record, but leading by eight at halftime over Gonzaga, Dave Pash, and Coach Rick Majerus. And even though Gonzaga's down, Adam Morrison had a terrific first half with 16 points. Hey. In terms of his offensive presence, he's going to have to do a lot better job this game of giving some kind of defensive impetus. But here we see him hit that long ball right there versus the zone. Now he gets some separation off the down screen on the man-to-man. -man. Then we see him come in here, and we see air go inside, and that's why they've colored up the paint. 16 points to four points in the paint, but they've also combined with the long ball and the high post catch, but it's all paint for Loyola. Points in the paint, 18 to four in favor of Loyola Marymount. Gonzaga shooting just 25% from the field. They shot 10 more free throws than LMU. And J.P. Batista suffered a mild knee sprain last night. Only two points in the first half and no field goal attempts in the first half for Batista in 11 minutes. Adam Morrison's four field goals all came in the first eight minutes of that half. Loyola Marymount had twice as many made shots as Gonzaga. Good start, though, for the Zags as Mallon banks it home. And to Batista's credit, when he sees that double, he's a poised passer. Risk adverse in that category. You saw it right there going to Mellon off of the double. Four now for Mallon. Here's Brandon Worthy, who had 11 to lead Loyola Marymount, gets it blocked by Mallon, and Altador Cespedes out of there with it. continue to go to Batista. They're doubling them every time. You can get a rotation or you can get a kickout basket. They got Worthy on Morrison to start this half. Here there's a double. Worthy has two fouls. Batista strong move. That's his first shot attempt of the game. He doesn't have much lift anyway. He's not a guy to go up and have bounce. So it's hard to tell how bad that knee is really bothering him. This game gets the automatic bid for the West Coast Conference. Gonzaga going to the tournament regardless of what happens tonight. The Zags trying to win the conference championship for the seventh time in the last eight years. Ziri got caught in the air and turned it over. 
Batista's just zoning off here. Batista catches, but he traveled. You talk about the Zaga, they're concerning themselves with the fishing. They shot 15 three throws to five, and they deserve to shoot him because they drive, they post, and they get offensive rebounds. They do an excellent job of being decisive on the closeout, and that gets you to the foul line. Royal well, Marymount 12 and 17 on the year, 8 and 6 during the regular season in conference play, lost twice to Gonzaga, but a hanging, more than hanging with the Zags on the road, so to speak, right now in the WCC championship game as Air scores to push the lead back to 8, and Batista gets fouled on the other end. That's going to go on Air, and that is 3 on him, first on LNU in the half. Well, on the other end, Air scored, and the reason he did it is because Baptista was zoning him off, paying attention to Knight. Here we see Air come underneath when, when Baptista loses vision. Baptista was a one-man zone in there, trying to contend with Knight before he got the pass. Air made a wise move there. I was wondering when he was going to recognize that. This deserves mentioning again when these two teams played last in California. As you look at the numbers on Batista tonight, Gonzaga was down at halftime by four. Adam Morrison outscored Loyola Marymount in the second half as Morrison put up 37, and the Zags won that game on the road. They've lived dangerously in about a handful of games in conference. A couple of one-point wins, overtime win last night against San Diego. At some point, will it catch up to them? And will it be tonight against Loyola Marymount in the WCC title game? War drop three, no good. Why the other long rebound? Pull up for three. Altador Cespedes gets the second chance. I'll tell you one thing, you don't need a shot clock in this game. Gonzaga shooting only 27% for the field. Morrison misses the first. Oh, of Batista half. just pushed him right out of there. They didn't call it though, and Batista gets the field goal his first of the game. Five point LMU lead. That's international ball for you. It's just a slugfest down there. And Batista got away at the big roundhouse push. Right. Gets the basket off the dish from Worthy. And that's what Marymount's done a great job of. Attacking the paint, getting those bigs to come to attack penetration, and laying off those short angle feeds. And Morrison's going to get fouled by Wardrop, his second, and the second on LMU in the half. Now you see Batista here, and he's looking to rebound. Now watch him get this push off right here. You see him get that right arm push in there. It's a man's game down in that paint. You got to expect to get pushed and shoved. Did you think the officials did a good job in the first half? Yes, I thought they did a great job in the first half. I called them over, and they came over. We gave each other the thumbs up. I think I tell you what, officials are fair. They're hardworking. They're human beings who have the foibles we're all subject to. Where you're going to make mistakes. Wardrop, that's a two-point basket. Back to a nine-point lead. My guess is you didn't give the thumbs-up sign too often as a coach to the officials. No, I let them alone, honest to God. They, they liked working for me, and I enjoyed them. There were four or five guys I couldn't stand, and other than that, there were you know, a dozen great ones. Here's Batista. Double-teamed every time. They got to make them pay for that double by getting a cutter in a row and, and a pass out of it. Boy, Altidore Cespedes has matured in the last two months to the point where he is a reliable option offensively. So athletic and yet so confident. Loyal Marymount trying to become one of only about five or six teams in the last 10 years or so as a team with a losing record to make the NCAA tournament. They've got a nine point lead as Worthy gets his first field goal of the second half. 13 points now in the game. Beautiful shot they set up that drive. Batista finds Mallon. Worthy broke up the pass. It'll stay Gonzaga ball. There they get the cutter, and one of the rare times Batista loses his feet to make a pass. Here we're going to take a look at Worthy right here. Nice shot fake, drives paint, comes in, lays it high off the glass. Couldn't have done it better. What a great fundamental move. Tonight's telecast is available on ESPN HD, presented by Dish Network. Gonzaga trailing by nine to Loyola Marymount. We've got more college basketball coming up tomorrow on ESPN2. It's the Big East Championship game from Hartford. Presented by Aeropostal. West Virginia against either DePaul or Connecticut. That first five minutes was so critical to Loyola coming out of the halftime. They've kept Morrison under control. 
Now, Gonzaga's not getting any fast break baskets, and they don't have a paint presence because Batista's getting doubled every time. And we get a whistle and a foul as Morrison got tangled up with Worthy. That's three on Worthy and three and a half on the Lions. Gonzaga has not committed a foul in this half. He's their best driver, plays with the most swagger, and a stalwart defender. Three fouls is bad for him. Adam Morrison doesn't have a field goal in the last 16 and a half minutes. Had four in the first eight minutes. Remember, he was on pace for 60. Well, he's still stuck on 16. They've done a nice job on Batista and Morrison. Watch him get separation on this dribble, rise up and shoot over you. And he's had trouble with the handle as LMU's been getting the hands in there and stripping him. Nice move worthy, and Knight with the follow. Loyola Marymount has its largest lead, 11. LMU's defense has been characterized by deflections and steals. And the deflections, ironically, have come from the bigs. Mallon can't hit the three. Morrison gets the rebound. They're just settling for jumpers now. Morrison still can't hit. Four out of 12. How about this? Gonzaga has never lost on this floor. 39 straight home wins in Spokane. And they trail double figures to a team that has a losing record overall this year. But under Rodney Tension in his first year has gotten much better the last two months. A lot of time left for a team with so much firepower and depth. Let me tell you that. There's plenty of ball to play here. Worthy on the drive. Knight tipped it over the backboard. It'll go to Gonzaga. They've got to make them pay for that Baptista double by rotating the ball out or hitting the cutter. They've got to get two guys to the top of the key, square that top of the key up, and get a cutter to the rim. Well, the Marymount is the only team in this conference that plays three players on the all-league team. Worthy, Wardrop, and Knight. Worthy has 13. Knight has eight. But Wardrop has only two. And then Worthy comes up with a steal. Challenged on the other end, and he scores. 13-point Lion lead. They're going to take a timeout here. They got Worthy off of Morrison, and the time before last game, Worthy did a great job of not even attempting to foul Morrison. Right now, it's all Loyola here because they've stopped the fast break and they're double teaming Batista for no paint point. Loyola Marymount by 13 in the WCC Championship game. Rodney Tension in his first year at the helm at LMU trying to restore the team to glory. They went to the NCAA tournament three straight years back with Bo Kimball and Hank Gathers, including in 1990 when the West Coast Conference Tournament was suspended due to Gathers' death. There's an offensive foul on Gonzaga. It's going to go against Altidore Cespedes, his second and first on the Zags in the half. But Loyola Marymount has not been to the NCAA tournament since then, back in 1990. And nobody thought they would be going this year. And they had a losing record in the regular season. But right now, they're up 13 in a road game. That's what Tension called it today. And it is, with 98% of the fan base at this game favoring Gonzaga. But if they keep going to penetration by getting the charge, get the deflections, and get the steals, they're going to win this game. Warchip, take the three, little pull up, and he banks it in. Great shot fake. He and Worthy both have terrific shot fakes. Gonzaga's 39 game home winning streak in jeopardy. The Lions have got the big Mo going for him, too. Mallon gets. The ball to drop in. Nice ball by Q. They've got to go inside. Not settle for so many jumpers. They had no paint scoring presence that first half at all. And that's the first time in the second half they've had it. Worthy into the lane. Offensive rebound, Siri. Another opportunity for LMU. Wardrop missed the three, Morrison the rebound. And he gets fouled, and that's four unworthy. No, that was as bad a foul as you've seen the entire last three days of basketball. Only one in the country. 72 feet from the basket, he's got three fouls. He's got to have the maturity not to get that kind of foul. They need him desperately. The most critical element in this game now is when do you put Worthy back in? Oh, my God. And Morrison does such a terrific job of calling attention to those fouls. 
Morrison has missed his last five shots, doesn't have a field goal in over 20 minutes. I like the move right here, the 1-3-1 one, zone. They had started off 2-3, Morrison bombed him on the wing. This 1-3-1 one, one has cooled Morrison off on the wing. Fargo finds Batista underneath. I like that even better. Drive that seam and get it inside. Back-to-back paint -back points. First time all night for Gonzaga. And they got dominated in the first half in the paint 17-4. Morrison and Siri are very physical in the paint. Siri's going to get a retaliation foul when Morrison grabs. Air. Too strong. Fargo the rebound. Nice block out. Nice dirty work by Mellon. He kept Knight off the glass. Batista running the floor. Hits the half hook. Can him seal. He finds your body. you got to stay deployed behind him. You can't get angled on him. Six to nothing. Gonzaga run. All with. Brandon Worthy on the bench. Air is fouled on his way to the hoop on Mellon. That's two on Mellon, second on the Bulldogs in the half. So with Brandon Worthy out of the game with four fouls, Gonzaga's mounted a mini six to nothing run, pulling within nine. Time now for a Sports Center 30 at 30 update. J.P. Batista fighting through a knee sprain suffered last night has seven second half points. Adam Morrison has not scored this half and Loyola Marymount had a 13 point lead one minute ago. It's down to nine. Air is shooting two free throws. Marymount's got their heart and soul. Big play player worthy on the bench with four fouls. That's a huge story worthy 15 points tonight to lead LMU. Right now, if I'm in the Zags, I go right into Batista. Unless Morrison gets a shot, can get some separation or falls into a shot. They go 1-3-1. One, one. It was 48-33. Gonzaga scored six in a row. Now it's a 10-point game, 11 and a half to go. Batista again, this time missing, and air with the board. Third straight time they've gone inside. And Morrison looking for help. Into the hands of Pargo tonight. It all started with Adam Morrison's hustle. They're going to motion right now. Zeri hit a couple of bombs in the first half. Missed there. Batista the rebound. Morrison in the front court. And there's a foul on the floor. They had height felt wide open underneath but couldn't see him. Actually, by Montgomery, that was a good foul. Watch this right here. Morrison strips it. Just happens to be there, has a presence of mind. Look at the bounce of the ball. How about Knight right here throwing it down? That is Knight School right there. Right. <laughs> Foul on Montgomery. That's his second and the fifth on the Lions in the half. That'll be in the yearbook or a highlight poster somewhere. That'll be on Throwdown Thursday with Reese in the studio. Gonzaga with an eight. Morrison still has not scored this half. It was an eight-point deficit at halftime. Morrison's three. No good. Ziri with the rebound. Morrison has missed his last six shots from the field. Of all great shooters, he's on the back of the rim. That's his shot. He was five out of 16 from the field last night. Managed to score 24 in an overtime win in the semis against San Diego. Plenty of time left for Morrison to get heated up here. Especially with Rooney on the bench. Georgia had it stripped by Morrison and he traveled. <laughs> Morrison's taking a page from the Iowa playbook. Active hands, deflections, strips. He's looking to rake the ball out of there. Well, in the second half, the last time he played Loyola Marymount, he had 37. He's got zero this half. Nonetheless, Gonzaga down 15 two minutes ago, back with an eight. And a chance to make it six or five with a three. Morrison doesn't lock up his own man, but what he does is he's a nuisance defender. That's where you want to go with it. Inside. I felt foul. He'll go to the line. That's 16 fouls on the Lions. And the second on Matthew Knight. And that bonus so important because Gonzaga shoots it so well. Struggling tonight, 10 of 17 as a team, but they're second in the country in free throw shooting. And they shoot a lot more than their opponents do. Oh, 
way more. But again, that doesn't have anything to do with the officiating. That's more style of play. I don't care what some other coaches in this league have said. We've talked about that. When you drive to the basket, when you go inside to the post to Batista or Morrison takes that mismatch inside, and when you offensive rebound and put it back up, that's how you get to the three throw line. That's where the wins are. If you're Rodney Tension, at what point does Brandon Worthy go back in the game? They have struggled mightily without him. Well, you got to know the ebb and flow of the game, and, and right now I keep him up. I'll let you know that in a minute. Great question by you. It's situational. And a foul going to be called on Knight, trying to fight through a screen. That's the second on Knight and the third on Gonzaga. And how about Pargo, the freshman, pulling Knight, the senior, back, showing terrific poise and leadership because Knight was upset about that foul. Batista going to go to the bench. Mallon will replace him. And Batista's going to go right to the bike. And if I was like, oh, I'd go right to Knight inside. There's the foul there. Back to live action. Since Worthy went out of the game with that fourth foul, Gonzaga on a 7 to 1 run. They got plenty of time on the shot clock. Wardrop, way off the line. Height felt the rebound. They got a pressing panic quality to their game right now. They got to get themselves under emotional control, Iowa. Gonzaga's won 17 straight games, 39 in a row at home. Trying to win the WCC championship for the seventh time in the last eight years. LMU trying to go to the NCAA tournament for the first time in 16 years. Hard goal for three. Big shot for the freshman out of Chicago. A nice pass by Morrison. Once again, Morrison does a good job hunting the shot, but he doesn't force the shot. If you're open, he'll give it to you. 12 to 1 run. By Gonzaga. Morrison just poked him in the eye inadvertently. Two on Morrison and four fouls on the Zags. Take a look at this pass. He draws two to him, sees over the defense. He's got that high angle feed by virtue of his height. Mark Few's got to be encouraged by this. Morrison hasn't scored in the second half. They've cut a 15 point deficit to four. He's got to be encouraged because they've gotten the ball inside. He's got to be real encouraged because he's got worthy on the bench with foul trouble. Knight couldn't handle the pass, but it went off the knee of a Gonzaga player. That's the right call. It'll stay LMU basketball. And it's difficult for big guys to handle passes at their knees. You always want to throw it up higher near the rim. Knight grabbed by Mallon. That's going to be foul number three on Mallon. Everybody talks smack. I'll tell you what, the NBA stuff is filtered down. You got Knight and Mallon talking to each other now. There is, a, some say, the mouth of the West. Adam, Gonzaga, or Adam Morris in a Gonzaga. But he backs it up. Five team fouls on the Zags. Morrison has played really good defense this half. Underneath, a hard foul as Haywood got smacked in the face by Knight. That's three on Knight, six on Gonzaga. The officials had to gather the players around in the first half. Do you think another meeting is necessary at this no, point? No, I don't think so. It's just a hard foul, but the credit the Knight of Loyola with a beautiful pass, nice pass and presence. Haywood had the presence of mind when his man leaves you. Cut to the rim for the double team. And Knight, because he's so used to the trapezoid lane, being an Aussie, knows to make that pass to that area of the floor. If Rodney Tension's team loses this game, they'll look back at missed free throws. They're three out of eight at the line tonight. They were seven of 21 last night and managed to win by three. They'll look back at the missed free throws, that terrible fourth foul that Worthy had made. Second one goes for Haywood. Air back into the game, and Haywood will go to the bench. They got to survive this TV timeout. There's 45 seconds to our TV timeout. These become two critical possessions for him. Brandon Worthy still on the bench, has been on the bench for the last four minutes, and Gonzaga's cut a 15-point lead down to five, and they've got the ball. I like Tenson's call of going man-to-man. Hendergraff, no, but he's fouled. Once again, you see how efficient Morrison is as a passer and his unselfishness. That's on air, and that's four on him. Seven on the Lions, both air and Worthy with four, team, or with four personal fouls. What happens, Morrison comes off that curl, draws two to him, and when he's in a crisp job of finding the pass out of it. 
Here you see him right here. Look at him lay that little bounce pass off. Nice job by Pendergraft taking it up strong. He hit the first free throw, 74% foul shooter. Gonzaga 12 of 20 at the line. Oil and Marymount 4 out of 9. The big mo has shifted right here to the home team, not the tournament team, the home team. First time this championship's been played in Spokane. Only one team has won it when it's been the host team, and that was San Diego. Knight touched it last. It'll stay loyal to Marymount basketball. That night there is a one-man whirling dervish defensively. Every attribute you want to ascribe to an athlete, this night's got in spades. Errol Knight. It's his final home game. Could be the final home game for Adam Morrison if he chooses to go pro. Pendergraft almost got a steal. Here's Brown. In there the you go. That's where you want to go. Knight can't strip it. Here comes Earl Knight, and he got attacked from behind, and Ziri lost it out of bounds. It'll go to Gonzaga. What a great competitive effort. What a terrific game. Adam Morrison still without a point since halftime. Doesn't have a field goal since early in the first half. He's missed the last six shots he's attempted from the floor. And all of shots oh Dave and underscore that they've been shots that he should take now he posts up that mismatch should have been a little more patient in there let that mismatch develop Morrison Batista still riding the bike waiting to come back into the game Fargo hit it three moments ago a big one for Gonzaga Morrison posting up Montgomery Montgomery does a wise thing there he fronts him but he doesn't call for help. Morrison gets the Zags into the points. First points for Morrison in the second half. Morrison is so smart. As soon as he got Montgomery on him, he took him to the block. And then a foul called on Cargo. That's his first 17 foul. Both teams in the bonus. Will we have a wild finish? Will someone's bubble burst? Or will the Zags win the WCC title again? 7.37 to go in the game. The MAAC championship game between St. Peter's and Iona. Marvin McCullough inside for the Gales of Iona and one. 70 to 56. Gales 443 away from punching their ticket to the dance, guys. All right, the reason here, Brandon Worthy's going to come into the game with four personal fouls at the 737 mark. He was on the bench for five minutes, and his team was outscored 14 to 2. He's got 15 points to lead LMU tonight. He's got to stay directed and disciplined. He cannot get his foul playing defense. He's going to have to be alert because they're going to try to get a charge on him. He's known to take it to that pain. He's going to have to pull up and utilize his middle game. Oil Marymount, four out of nine of the foul line, and a one and one coming up for Montgomery, 78% foul shooter. And Gonzaga shooting 61% from the foul line, 44% for Loyola. Shot that like a coach's son. Mike would be proud somewhere tonight. Hope he gets a chance to watch his boy play. Beautiful kid. LMU trying to end the Zags' home winning streak, the longest in the country, 39 straight. This building was built a couple of years ago. They've never lost here, Gonzaga. And Loyola Marymount has not defeated a ranked team since it last went to the NCAA tournament back in 1990. Right now, they've got number four on the ropes, leading by three. And they got my man Haywood on Morrison. I said he could be the X Factor, and he has the size, strength, and toughness to cover Morrison. He's just going to have to be careful he doesn't get involved in any theatrics. Morrison with back-to-back -back field goals, 20 points in the game. What a tough shot. That was a big-time shot. Taylor could not have played that better. Credit Morrison's offensive skills for that one. Nice in-out game there. That's before the shot foul by Gonzaga. That's 18 fouls and only the first on J.P. Batista. Take a look at Haywood right here. He's got his nose in his chest. He levels off that drive. He doesn't want to foul. That's just Morrison with long arms, high arcing shot. He doesn't blow by you with speed or quickness. He gets separation by virtue of his height and high release. That's big for Matthew Knight. He made only two out of 12 free throws last night. He gets his first attempt in this game to drop. 
And that was the first in out game I've seen here in the last two days. Knight got it, kicked it back out, and they went right back into it. He gained ground and caught the second catch in the paint. That's why he got to the foul line. Then a foul on Dustin Brown for over the back, his first, eighth on the line. That's a foolish foul. You know, the referees will call enough fouls that you get in the in the in the, in the in the in the in the combat of the game. You don't need to like bait him with some kind of inadvertent foul like that. Rodney Tension in his first year at Loyola Marymount after eight seasons as an assistant at Arizona. He's used to going to the NCAA tournament. The Wildcats have the longest active streak of NCAA tournament appearances at 21 in a row. That could be in jeopardy with Hassan Adams uh, out for the Pac-10 tournament due to what is an alleged DUI. Tension mentioned that he hasn't spoken with Adams, but says he's going to call him. Meanwhile, that's a 23rd Gonzaga free throw to 11 for Loyola Marymount, and this could very well be the biggest possession of the game. First tie since it was 21-21. Woody does a great job of finding guys. Haywood, big shot from about 15 feet. LNU back up two. Nice pass by Worthy. The Lions led by 15 earlier in the half. That was the largest deficit in the history of this building for Gonzaga. But the Zags have battled back. They tie the game. They have not led since the 842 mark of the first half. Morrison missed the three that would have given them the lead. Three on two break. Here comes Worthy down court. The pull-up jumper, no good. Batista clears. And now the Zags run right back at you. We had two for them. Altador Cespedes hits Morrison in the lane. No good, but he's fouled, and he'll go to the line for a pair. ESPN's coverage of the Big East Championship kicks off Wednesday with a pair of first-round games. At noon, Eastern Syracuse and Cincinnati, Notre Dame and Georgetown follows at 2 Eastern, and who knows, one or two of those teams could be impacted by what happens here tonight in this game between Loyola Marymount and Gonzaga. If the Lions win, they get the automatic bid as a team with a losing record. Gonzaga's going, obviously, no matter what happens tonight for them. And Loyola won't go unless they do win. Meanwhile, how about Morrison? He just missed Early another game. free throw. Hey, That's his fifth miss tonight. Yep, five out of ten at the line. Talk about why he's so good. That last catch in that kind of traffic with a hard ball thrown to him. He's got terrific hands, this kid. One out of two, and it's a one-point game, six-minute mark. Worthy playing with four fouls for LMU. He finds Knight able to connect from the short corner. What an advantage to have a big who can hit a 15-footer open. Back to a three-point Loyola Marymount lead. Now they got Batiste in. And they got Haywood on Morrison. Pendergraft ties the game with a triple. That's only his third May three of the year. And who got the pass? Morrison. And then fouled from behind is Brown by Pargo. Second on Pargo, nine on the Zags. Look at Morrison. He did a smart thing there. He baited that double team and took it one step further with a dribble, and that didn't enable the guy to recover back to Pendergraf. Morrison has a great intuitive feel for the game. Had he kicked it back right out, Pendergraf's man would have, the subtlety of that play by Morrison indicates that he's probably ready to get that check on the first and 15th of every month. Yep, could very well be Morrison's final home game. The junior from here in Spokane. He committed to Gonzaga very early in his uh, high school tenure. And a lot of fans want him to stick around for his senior season. I got a feeling somewhere up in heaven, Bing Crosby is singing to him right when he walks out the floor. The Bob Hope song, Thanks for the Memories. Brown, a 56% free throw shooter, nails both of those. Gets congratulated as he goes to the bench. And Air comes back into the game. He's got four. Worthy in the game for LMU. He has four. No one in real serious foul trouble for Gonzaga. Batista from Morrison. They get two to Morrison. How many times they got to run that play? That's the ninth time I've seen that in two days here. They cannot come up on Morrison and double him off that down screen. Wardrup for two. Morrison the rebound. 
Out to Fargo. Gonzaga looking for its first lead since the midway mark of the first half. Zags trying to win their 40th straight at home and capture the WCC championship for the third straight year and seventh in the last eight as Morrison gets fouled by Haywood and will go to the line for two. That's the 10th line foul. Here you're going to see Batista on that down screen off the right side. Look at that. Look at Morrison curl it. He draws Batista's man to him. And that play's been run on the right-hand side nine times here. And nine times Morrison makes the unselfish pass. As I said, he hunts the shot. He doesn't force the shot. He has a nice passing efficiency and economy of game, economy of motion to his pass game. He struggled at the free throw line tonight. Six out of 11, normally 78%. Gives Gonzaga the lead there, the first since 8.42 remaining in the opening half. Gonzaga has overcome a 15-point deficit in eight minutes. And overcome just a fismal foul shooting, too, although Loyola's right in that category as well. They got the double curl of the three play here to a post up. Here's Haywood. And his pass over the head of Knight out of bounds. And Rodney Tension wants a timeout. He threw that pass too hard and left his feet. He didn't need to throw that. No, Tension's not going to take a timeout because he's going to wait for the TV timeout right here. He signaled for it at first and then backed off from it after the official didn't see it. Both teams with 12 turnovers. Pargo taking it all the way and scoring. And Gonzaga leads by four. And who's coming up worthy with a score foul? Here's Wardrip down court. Oh, and what a play! Scored with a left hand and he's fouled. You and I are both so excited. What a game. Wardrop had 31 earlier this year at Gonzaga. That's only a sixth point at this game, but a big basket. Take a look at Pargo right here. He sees Worthy gapping him so much, and he isn't known to be an offensive threat to drive. He's known to be a feeder, ball changer, passer, screener. And he says, well, let me take you if you're not going to cover me. He's 0 for 3 from the foul line, close to 80% of the year. Both teams in the double bonus, under four minutes to go. Gonzaga by two. Morrison brings it up the floor. 23 points for him tonight. They go back to the 1-3-1 zone, and you were so apropos pulling your call before. You said they're going to look back on their fourth foul screen and Lyola if they miss, if they lose this game. Yeah, they're 9 of 16 at the line. Fargo hit the three earlier. Got that one to drop two. The freshman off the bench with eight second half points. So deep, so much talent. So many weapons. Someone's bubble is still intact right now. They're trying to go leading by five. They're trying to post Hayward on Morrison right here. Worthy, way off. And kept alive by Haywood. And a foul inside on Gonzaga. 66, 61, Gonzaga by five. Here you see Morrison. He drives, draws, and kicks. He was looking at the rim all the way. Beautiful pass again by the high scorer. Our Nike game track in the West Coast Conference title game, the Zags outscoring LMU by 13 this half, in part because of Worthy's four fouls. And Adam Morrison, only two field goals in the last 28 minutes, but four assists. And four and one's the hockey assist, where he makes the pass that leads to the pass that gets the assist. He's an unselfish star. Here you're going to see Morrison and the way in which he gets him. There he curls, lays that bounce pass off to Batista. Here he baits that double team down against the mismatch and kicks it off the fender grab. And there he draws and kicks the Pargo to the dagger in the heart just seconds ago. Gonzaga trying to extend the second longest winning streak in college basketball to 18 straight. And the nation's longest home winning streak to 40 in a row. Don Haywood at the line shooting two. As much as I disdain his defense, I admire his unselfishness and his passing skills. He's an unheralded passer. He has a great feel for the wear and one of the pass and almost not, and, and incredibly insulted. Sports Center coming up next here on ESPN. Haywood one out of two and LMU shooting right around 50% from the line and that's not good enough to beat Gonzaga on the road. Although the Zags have struggled themselves at the strike. Man to man and Haywood on Morrison. Look at Morrison working. Morrison 
Harrison, 23 points in the game. Pardo has got eight this half. Off with that three, worthy the rebound. Not particularly a good shooter, but he sure is a confident one. Big possession here for LMU. Matthew Knight just hurt himself. Earl Knight ran into him. Wardrop to air on the baseline, can't score, but a foul. Blocking call on Pendergrass. Nice call by the referee. That was definitely a block. He wasn't set. You've got to be set. These refs have done a superb job tonight. That's the second on Pendergraft. Both teams with a double bonus and three timeouts for the rest of the way. Air is a 67% free throw shooter. One out of two tonight. That was a good fall by Pendergraft to put his body in there. Bait the referee. Might have gotten a bad call from the ref. The ref in this case made a good one. And Air is not that good of a foul shooter. As I say that, boom. 66-63, the winner of this game gets the automatic bid. The WCC has sent two teams to the NCAA tournament three of the last four years. Offensive rebound for Haywood. Worthy with four fouls, got to be careful on the draw. Good call by you, Dave, because he has a tendency to get charging fouls. Air elbow J and LMU back within one. They've scored the last four points. What a nice pass by Matthew Knight, the Aussie. He saw a custom going to the weak side elbow because that's what the international trapezoid lane is conducive to. Well, the final home game perhaps for Adam Morrison be a celebratory one. He's going to fire three. He's going to miss it. And Knight with a rebound, and LMU can take the lead. Hayward can play him. He's got the size, the toughness, and the strength. Gonzaga with the nation's longest home winning streak, 39 in a row, and a foul called inside on Pargo. That's three on him. More free throws coming up as the Lions look to take the lead. And even though Wardrup has struggled tonight at the line, 0 for 3, and he's a 77% foul shooter. 0 3 against Portland was the last time that Gonzaga lost, and that was in the old kennel. They've never lost in the new building, McCarthy Athletic Center. Although this is also called the kennel. Wardrup finally connects from the foul line to tie the game. Rivio back in along with Mallon and Pendergraft and Pargo will go to the bench. Call it what you want. There's no dogs in either team tonight. Every kid out there has given a maximum effort and, and quite frankly a very unselfish one. Wardrup gets the second one and the Lions have scored the last six points to take a one point lead. And a timeout called by Gonzaga. Good call by Few. He's NBA oriented. He runs some NBA offensive plays and he extends it to a full timeout so he can make sure his team knows what they're going to do out of the huddle. I'll be curious to see what Loyola does. Are they going to go to the 1 3 1? Or are they going to come back man to man and put Hayward on as the stopper on Morrison? Where have they been more successful on Morrison? In the zone or in man? In man to man. And they played fresh blood through him. Four guys took a piece of them in five occasionally when they got a switch. I think that that's accounted for Morrison's fatigue. He's usually long off the back of the rim. The last two, if you recall, the last one especially, he's right off the front of the rim. But like the great shooter he is, he's always either on the back or front of that rim. Both teams have the double bonus. Two timeouts remaining for Gonzaga. Credit Loyola Marymount with resolve. They blew a 15-point lead eight minutes ago, but came back from a five-point deficit to get that lead back. This has been a wonderfully played game. Well, Loyola Marymount knows if it doesn't win this game, it's unlikely that uh, there's going to be any postseason. They've got a losing record, and in the old NIT rules, you couldn't play in the NIT with a losing record. I think the NIT not really does deserve to go to San Diego, in spite of the record. San Diego played them a great game last night, too. There have been the four teams uh, recently that have had losing records going to the NCAA tournament. It's happened 19 times in history, and of those four right there, if Loyola Marymount should win this game, it would have the second worst record of teams in recent memory to go to the tournament. They're 12 and 17 this year, but eight and six in the conference. They did finish in a tie for second in the WCC. Now watch, you're gonna go down screen, curl again, no Morrison comes off the double over here. Morrison with 23 points, but only six of 17 from the floor. Finds Batista. 
Can't score. Knight skies in there. Lost the ball. Matthew Knight able to save it. But he traveled. Oh, tough call. Jeez, I don't know about that one. Knight doesn't know about you. That's certainly not the kind of call he's accustomed to getting in Tasmania or Australia. So it stays Zags basketball, a new shot clock. Morrison double teamed in the corner. There it is right there. The curl, the shot, the miss, the tip goes for Batista. Zags in the ball. Big guy put out there again. Where they let Batista have a free run of the rim. That's their go-to play. That's their go-to side of the floor. Gosh darn it. They go inside to Matthew Knight. Tough shot. He goes hard to the depth, but no call. Zags ball in a one-point lead. 13-second shot differential right here. If they can make a defensive stop, the game can be theirs. And they can tie it in if it's only a two-ball. As you see, about a 13 and a half second difference between the game and shot clocks, and Mark Few calls a timeout. I'm wondering for the 11th time out of this timeout. In two days, if they're going to go with Batista on the right elbow, down screen, curl Morrison and hit Batista again, or give him a run to the rim. Here's his last play. Comes off that down screen, and now you see they come up the help, and that gives Batista a free shot at the tip in right there. That big cannot get separated and come to Morrison on that. You might want to think about coming up the middle of that screen there and forcing Morrison to a fade. Following the game at Sports Center, Stuart Scott and Steve Levy. Tragedy strikes the world of sport once again as uh, Kirby Puckett passes away at age 45. And bubble trouble in the NCAA plus a sun streak in jeopardy. And if Oil Marymount should win this game, whose bubble will burst? If Gonzaga wins, status quo at least tonight. You're a Syracuse alum. If you guys beat Cincinnati, are you guys in, in your opinion? Uh, no, I think Syracuse would have to beat Connecticut then in the second round. One timeout remaining for Gonzaga. Three for Loyola Marymount. Good call. I applaud your opportunity. Ten seconds to go on the shot clock. Rivio finds Knight. Batista, four on the timer. Batista gets inside. Miss! Here comes Worthy. Loyola Marymount has three timeouts left. Oh, wow. And they're going to use one here. 10.6 remaining. Rodney Tension with a smile on his face. And LMU with a chance to win. They are so excited just to have the chance to win. Now you're giving Gonzaga a chance to set its defense. Well, Gonzaga has had some close calls this year. A couple of one-point wins. An overtime win last night against San Diego. In regulation, with under five seconds to go, San Diego races down the floor. Johnson to Belser with one-tenth of a second left. That sends the game into overtime. In and deference then, to big game James Worthy, big game Brandon Worthy. And then in the extra in session, it's Adam Morrison, one of only five field goals in the game. And then a nice pass here to Batista. We've got his fourth great double-double. He's got another one tonight. Gonzaga wins it in overtime. We mentioned two one-point wins, a three-point win a week ago tonight against San Francisco on an outdoor assessment as three. Morrison to Batista is their version of Stockton and Malone. What are you going here? I'm either going to go Worthy or Knight. Or some combination thereof. Worthy's got four fouls. He's got 15 points to lead LMU. Now they take another timeout in the NBA. LMU they used to do this to see to see how you set your defense, but they just want more time to talk it over. So one timeout remaining for each school. What is the play here for Rodney Tension? It's got to be Worthy making the play, and somehow it's Knight. You want to make sure Knight and either Air or Brown, whichever other big is in, gets to that glass. But these are the kind of situations where your smalls have got to go rebound because the least likely guy to be blocked out right now is one of the perimeter players, and you're not worried about back flow. You're not worried about defensive court balance. You're worried about getting two attempts up at the rim. 
More college basketball tomorrow night. The Women's Big East Championship on ESPN2, West Virginia, and UConn. Championship week presented by 7-Up continuing from the Hartford Civic Center tomorrow at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN2. We've got 10.6 seconds left here. A 17-game winning streak on the line. 39 straight at home for Gonzaga. They've never lost in this building. They lead by one, and they're on defense. Three outstanding rebounds in the game. Hayward can get to that glass, as can Knight. Here's Wardrop. There they give it to the man. Here's Worthy. Five seconds to go. Worthy, triple team. Got to get it up. Worthy fights. Airs right. No good. Gonzaga survives and wins the championship again. Was it our stage that set the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat? Adam Morrison playing perhaps his final game at McCarthy Athletic Center. If it is, he goes out on a winning note, capturing the WCC championship. And Brandon Worthy played a superb game. Classy move there by Mark Few, talking to him, Billy Greer, and all the Gonzaga coaches congratulating Worthy on a well played tournament but Loyola Marymount comes up one point short Chris Ayer had a chance to win it after Worthy made a great pass to fight through a triple team but Ayer couldn't hit the shot and they got a great shot take a look at Errol Knight though as this ball goes up I know he blocked it but did he goaltend it three come to Worthy you called it Dave what a sensational find here gives it to Knight that was just blew it he didn't catch it, huh? No, he just missed the shot. Knight did not block it. Air just blew it. Watch here. One and a half. He just missed it. Good call. That's why you're a great play-by-play -play guy. You got the interview, man. Morrison with 23. And Gonzaga gets the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament winning the West Coast Conference Championship on its home floor. 68-67 the final over Loyola Marymount. Sports Center is up next for Rick Majerus and our entire ESPN crew, Dave Pash, saying so long from Spokane.